Daily Broadside, day 638. Yesterday, I, along with my mom and one of my sons, went to Waffle House for a kind of a uh, brunch. I don't know what time it was, but it wasn't really lunch. It wasn't really breakfast. But anyway, I go in there, and I'm out. And it's this place is like off the chain busy. You never know what you're going to get when you go in this place. Although, we do find the food above average. Um, for, for what it is, it's above average. So I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm watching all the people and everything, and there's every ne'er-do-well and weirdo and loser and expatriate and uh, person that's been ostracized from the societies in there and whatnot. And there's these two people sitting at the bar, you know, the little counter where you got the individual chairs, and they're sitting there, and they look like they've just rolled out of, um, you know, a wings at Myrtle Beach, right? The one dude's got, like, flip-flops and, like, short khaki shorts and like a vineyard vine shirt. I don't even know what the hell that is, but I thought that was what women wore. And she's wearing like a, you know, I don't know. It just looked like they're right out of the beach. And they, they had that like 22 year old getting ready to graduate college in the South kind of look, you know, and they did not match anybody else in the place, me included. And so the waitress that we had missing several teeth at the front, you know, she's got the the kind of the meth mouth thing going on, but her nails are really nicely done, you know, and I'm like, priorities, lady, priorities. But anyway, uh, she's running with the, her head cut off like a chicken, you know, and, and every time she goes by the like three or four tables, she's like, y'all good, y'all good. And it's like, you're over waitressing, like chill out. Okay. Yes, we're good. You, I've got water. I've got tea. I got whatever. Just to go do what you got to do. So, you know, we, and, and within like, w after we order within like three minutes, she's bringing two plates of the three of us. She's bringing two plates to the table and she sets them down in front of my mom and my son who are on the opposite side from me. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't think that's what he ordered, but okay, whatever. And damn, that was quick. You know, it seems like there were like five other tables that were already here that aren't eating before us, you know? And so, uh, my son, it kind of, he's quizzically looking at it. Like, I don't think this is what I ordered. And he picks up a piece of the buttered toast and bites off a corner of it and puts it right back down the triangle on top of the other triangle. And uh, about that time, I'm like, he's looking still kind of weird. And I'm like, tell me what you got. You got scrambled? He's like, no, I got over easy. And I'm like, and about that time, she's, she, she's come back. And it's been like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. She's like, that's not y'all's. I'm sorry. And she picks up both plates. My mom didn't touch hers. My son had obviously eaten a chunk out of the piece of toast takes it and carries it immediately before I can say anything to, Hey, he took a bite at, she goes and puts it in front of the preppy, uh, white couple that's sitting at the counter, you know, the, uh, the beach goers. And I'm like, Oh crap. I'm like, Oh what? dude. Cause I thought at first she was just going to like dump it in a, in a, in a bowl or, you know, in the like a uh, dish trough or wherever they discard food and then make a new, you know, dinner. No, she just takes it to another table and provides it to them. And so the guy just sits there and he starts eating off it. And I'm like, and I'm sitting there like this. Now I'm like, you know, three booths and, you know, I'm, I'm 20, 30 feet away. And I'm like, oh crap, dude, they just gave your food to somebody. Well, wait, don't turn around, don't turn around. Uh, he's eating it. And so I see the dude, he picks up, he picks up a piece of the toast that's got the bite missing from it finally. And he's like, you know, going, going one of these, right? And, uh. About that time, she comes back, and he, he points it out to her, and he puts it down on the table, and she's like, oh, I'll get you some more toast. And I'm thinking, how about you get me a whole new plate, woman? This thing's got a bite taken. And they and I could hear him talking, and she was like, everything good? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, this dude does not seem to care that somebody took a huge bite at it. And there's really no point of this story other than the fact that this lady was, again, waitressing too hard. At one point, she made the comment, she's like, I just want y'all to know that I do not suck at my job, but if I do, you're welcome to tell me. And I was like, I don't even know where that leaves us. Like you kind of do suck at your job because you're over again, waitressing, like you can do too much. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and you're overcompensating. You're obviously got some insecurity things going on. Like just quit projecting all this. I don't know. Anyway, but, uh, Waffle House, y'all gotta do better than that, man. You can't be serving food. that's already been, once that stuff is on somebody's table, you can't take it to another table. You know what I mean? And if you put clothes into a hotel drawer and you're doing short-term stay, meaning you're only there for one, two to four, three, four nights, y'all, y'all crazy. That's, that's Nazism. Like that's, that's, uh, grounds for being deported in this country. Don't be putting your clothes in nasty drawers. Keep them in your suitcase. That's, and it makes, it begs the question why they even have drawers in most hotels, you know? 
Because, yeah, I get it that some people stay like long term in, you know, those things. But I'm talking most hotels, there's no need for any of that to be there. It could just be shelves, you know. It could just be a, a blank wall, something to put the TV on, you know. It's not really, uh, not really necessary, if you know what I mean. And I don't understand this concept of what is a red flag. As I've stated in the last uh, month or so, I am head over heels in love with this online, or not, well, that's not online, it's a... Uh, the, the TikTok speed dating. Um, I, I watch uh, Mitchell's show all the time. It's just great. I can't stop watching it. It's a great way to spend time. And I just, I have, I learned so much about humanity from it because there are some people out there that they've got to be single for the rest of their life. There's just no way that somebody's going to match up with these people, but I cannot look away, right? And everybody's, you know, they get on there and they say the same stuff, you know, like, what do you do for a living? How old are you? Where are you at? What do you like to do for fun? Maybe what are your red flags? And the red flag thing has kind of got me. I, I don't quite understand what we're looking for, you know? Because like today, I was just watching one just a little while ago. And you've seen the same cast of characters on all the different ones. It's just kind of funny. They're just floating around, just speed dating like 24-7. If I'm off work, I'm speed dating. I'm going to find me a, a partner in uh, Quebec. But anyway, um, the red flag will be... Today, they were like, what's your red flag in a partner? And they're like, lying, cheating. You know, and it's like, I don't think that's really a red flag. That's kind of like a, a just a, a staple in a relationship. You know, um, I don't know many people that would enjoy lying or cheating in a relationship. That's like me saying, like, what's your red flag in an automobile? I'm like, man, I just I hate it when it runs out of gas and I hate it when the engine blows up and I hate it when like the tires are bald and they blow out. And then I'm stuck on the side of the road. No, 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 no. Your red flag in an automobile would be like, I hate it when there's no cruise control. I hate it when the air conditioner is not offered on that model. Or I hate it when it doesn't have a sunroof, you know? That kind of thing, right? A, a red flag in a relationship to me would be, uh, a red flag would be, I don't like dating people that don't have kids. Because if I have kids and you don't, you can't relate to my world, no matter how much you think you can and whatnot. Or I don't like... I don't like dudes that don't like dogs or I don't like girls that don't like cats or, or I don't, um, I don't like dating people that have never been married or in, you know, serious long-term relationships. But, you know, those are red flags because those are things that you can, you know, point to that, that just don't make any sense and whatnot to you and, and won't jive with what you're standing for. But just to say like, uh, I don't like it when people ghost me, that's a red flag. Is it? I mean, that that's something that we can all agree on. So I think we need to get these red flags straightened out and, uh, you know, cornered in and, and, and paint ourselves into that so that we know what the heck we're talking about. Because I don't think people understand what a red flag is. I could be wrong. Tell me if I am. But uh, I don't think I am on this. Nevertheless, get him.